Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? Um, today's video is going to be as interesting as usual. Um, we are going to show you something very, very interesting or something very important. You know, um, maybe as you're in school or maybe you're working or whatever level you are and you have been given a tax in GIS. You know, it's always good you have your imagery from your imagery, you move into your GIS environment. Sometimes you can even get imagery from your GIS environment. Then you start maybe getting your points, your lines, your polygons, and maybe you put them in a frame and then you give it the legend, the scale, and the not arrow, the grid, and finally you, you export your product, right? Good. So you are going to see something very, very similar. But you are going to see that on this video as we progress. So on this video, we are going to show you how to use QGIS. We are going to show you how to use QGIS. Now you can see Google Earth on your on your screen. Now the essence of coming to Google Earth is that we believe that it's actually the world database, right? Good. You can actually navigate to any part of the world and maybe get raster data information, or maybe any other information because it's just beyond raster data. You can get so many information which you would use as your uh, your, your primary or maybe your secondary data, whatever the case is and you proceed so we are going to start off from what from google Earth. so um on today's video we will still emphasize it we are going to show you how to use qgis now the scope is for you to be able to get your area of concentration maybe your area of study or whatever the case is import it to qgis but these two steps are going to be merged because of ease then show it on qgis using a plugin and you know some other stuff so now let's delve into the business of the day so um, if you're coming to the channel for the first time, you can encourage us by subscribing. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for always checking up on us. So the first thing is that let's um, try to locate our area of concentration, maybe our area of interest. So I'm going to search for my school, which is um, the Federal School of Surveying, or your right. Let's see this second one, then let's search for it. Now, the Federal School of Surveying, or your will serve as our base map, right? Good. It will serve as our base map. Good. So we have the Ferrari School of Surveying or your year on our window, right? Now, what's the next thing we want to do? You know, on the normal day or conventionally, let's use that. Conventionally, you would have tried to maybe save the image of Ferrari School of Surveying or your, you know, try to locate some points using your your place mark, right? Um, using this particular tool here, yeah, your place mark. Using these points to using this to rather to locate some points and then get their coordinates and you know later move it to QGIS and start your maybe georeferencing and your digitizing process, right? Good. However, that's not what we are going to do. We are going to just get a vector data set from this our area. Then we are now going to move that vector data set to QGIS. Then from QGIS, we would now see Google Earth on QGIS save that our area from QGIS and subsequently do what? Subsequently starts doing what? Starts to digitize. So it saves you the stress of maybe georeferencing by maybe trying to get the GCPs or in this case using your place mark to get the coordinates and maybe trying to do what? Trying to, what do you call it? To georeference and subsequently start the digitizing. However, if you already have an image and the image was sent to you, just like an image you can see on the screen here, and you already have your GCPs, maybe an image you cannot locate on Google Earth, it's always good you do what you you do reference, right? Good, you use those images, those points, rather, those coordinates, coordinates on the images, or maybe those GCPs, right? Or maybe those um, prominent locations or prominent markers or whatever the case is to do reference. However, when you don't have that and you're working from Google Earth, it is advisable or I would suggest that you don't put yourself under the maybe the pressure of maybe trying to get your place markers or yeah your place marks and then maybe moving those um, moving the image with the place mark to what features enough say so now let's see how we are going to get that vector data so we come to what add polygon right so we click on add polygon then let's say we need this is federal school of surveying let's say this is the area that is being covered by federal school of surveying if i am not making a mistake it's actually my alma mater let's see let's see this we are going to change the coloring don't worry we are going to make it transparent very soon 
so let's see let's see let's see i hope i don't seed my school land to someone else let's see so good let's now change it so that uh, we can see outline right good let's change the color to something more um, lines right change that to red good so let's see let's see this is fair right let's still zoom in and this now okay let's let's take this to be the boundary of the school it might be exact it might not be so let's call this um, AOC right let's call this AOC AOC for GIS right good let's call this AOC so we are going to move this our AOC towards to QGIS very soon so we say okay let's see good it's fair enough Fair enough. All right. Good. So now that we already have our AOC, the next thing we are going to do now is to move this our AOC, but we need to save it. So let's come right click on that particular folder and then you go to what save places as, right? Good. So we are actually on the folder we are working on. We called it how to use QGIS and we want to save it as what, let's say, a KML file, right? So AOC for QGIS in a KML file extension, right? Good. So we do what we save now upon saving it we already have it in our pc or maybe on the system or whatever the case is let's now go on qgis to start the the main process all right we are on qgis right now and we want to do what we want to start the main process you must be connected to the internet it's very very important you're connected to the internet because when you're not connected to the internet you might not be able to assess some of the plugins that we want to show to you now so without spending much time let's see let's come to what let's come to web then on that web let's go to what quick map services now there is a video on the channel which we have shown you how to come about this um, quick map services we are going to leave a link to that video on the description section so that you can actually get it because if we go through that process you might Still take might still take longer time, you know. So let's come towards Google, and then we need them. Um, let's say we need Google Satellite. So we want to load Google Satellite, which means we want to load something that is like um, um, Google it. Good. So we already have our Google Satellite loading. The next thing we need to do now is to import that what that KML file we saved, that our AOC we saved as what the KML file. So you come under layer. You go to what you go to add layer then you go to what add vector layer because it's actually what a vector layer right good when you have data source manager for vector data open you now click on these three ellipses to browse right so this will now take you maybe to your pc where you can now maybe navigate to wherever you would have saved that for that kml file right so you click on it so we are actually working on a folder called how to use qgis so we see it there we do what we open we add and close, which means we are trying to import add layer and then we can close. So we would later see it on our what on our layer panel. Good, so we have our what we have our AOC on our layer panel. However, we have not been able to locate it, so we have to zoom to what that layer. So we right click on it. And we do what we zoom to the layer so you can now see that layer is filled however it was not filled when we when we um, exported it from google Earth. but that notwithstanding we come to properties you right click on that particular layer and you come to properties we want to what change the outline are we together so these are some of the things that you can come across as you walk so you come under symbology then you go to um simple fill right then you click on outline simple line then let's change the color to 
let's change this color to red let's change this color to red right good i just have a preference for red so good we have our what we have our aoc open for us to see through right good now this is actually the very first step and we still have um, so much to do on this video good so since we have this now we need to save this image we need to save this area we need to save this image right we need to save this image and by saving this image we already have it what geo reference by saving this image we already have it what geo reference so that's the place or maybe that's the stage we told you earlier on that we are going to what we are going to merge it we are going to have you maybe make it easier for you right good so we are going to what save this this image and the image we are going to save here is already what you reference so for us to be able to do what for us to be able to save this particular area of interest or so let's say as an image you do what you come to this um google satellite you right click on it and you go to what you go to export right then you click on save us good now on save us you have save raster layer as you uncheck and um, create vrt and then we are saving it as what a GOT format it's actually an image but it already has what um, it's already due reference right good so um the file name the file name we have been able to navigate to the folder we are working on and let's still call this um, aoc right let's still call this aoc for qj let's call this aoc for qj and then we do what we save it good then the crs this crs is very very important it's actually one of the most important aspects of this video so instead of leaving it on them um, pseudo mercato we come we click on that icon and then we change it to let's say let's call it wj 84 for the meantime are we together good then the the layer now if we want to download the image for all of this um, area where maybe of everywhere it will be very very bad so let's just come to what calculate from layer and then the layer we are calculating from is this vector layer so this vector layer will serve as our guide so if you don't want to use wgs84 you can still use the projected coordinate system right the projected the um, coordinate reference system and oyo is under um, zone 31 so you just click on zone 31 and upon clicking on that you would see that what your coordinates are what are changing now the essence of this is for you to be able to have the image of what your area of interest or your area of concentration where you're working on is actually because we have saved it to this what to this current layer and layer we are working on now is what is our aoc layer right good then let's change our resolution to something like 0.5 so we can be able to download it as fast as we can and um, what else what else nothing we have unchecked the VRT. that's actually very important so we have what the 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 image of our what our area of interest now we can decide to extend it outside but the reason why we don't want to extend it outside and if you want to extend it outside you can just come under what map canvas extent the map canvas extent will just download the image as it is being shown on what your map canvas are we together so we also need to explain these other options so that you can understand the map canvas the map um, canvas extent will do what will be able to will allow you to download as it is being displayed on your map canvas so depending on what you want you can decide to make any choice you want to make and then the resolution we have 0.5 so we say what we say okay So you can see the progress the image is being downloaded right good task complete and image successfully downloaded good saved as a raster now for us to be able to continue we are going to import that raster data we have saved are we together so we are going to import that as a raster data then we can start what we can start the other step of the other processes in the video so i hope you've been following up up to this point it's actually very important so let's clear everything we have here discard there's an essence for that um should we discard everything yes let's discard everything good so we have a new project right good so now let's come to layer 
we go to add layer and this time around we are adding what a raster layer because it's the image that we have saved or downloaded that is already due reference that we want to add what we want to add to QGIS right so you click on what add raster layer then under the data source manager for raster data you just come to what browse Good. We are still on that folder. So AOC for QGIS open. Then we say add and um, close. Good. So we have perfectly where we want to work on and some surrounding environment, which is actually very good. So now the next thing we want to do now is that this image has been georeferenced. So if you want to confirm, you right click and you come to what you come to properties. You can see under the code reference system. You see at you see at what UTM zone 31 meters and rest of that. So if it was just an image you maybe you saved or maybe you downloaded from QGIS, maybe you imported from in data source, your coordinate reference system will not be set because you've not done what you've not georeferenced it. So this image has been georeferenced. And another thing is that if it was just an image that has not been georeferenced, you would see a question mark here giving you a notification that this particular layer does not have a code reference system set yet. I think there is a yet at the end. So it does not have a code reference system yet or so. So you need to do what? You need to set the code reference system. However, for this image we are working on, you have been able to see that it has been what? It has been georeferenced. And the resolution is fair enough because we can see most of the features we have on the, on, sorry, we can see most of the features we have on the what on the image, some of the buildings, some of the roads and the trees and the rest of that. So it's fair enough for us to use. So now this takes us to the next stage of the video. Now we want to show you. Remember, we have shown you how to move from Google Ads to what to QGIS using the KML as our AOC. All of those things are on the channel. Then we now shown you how to do what, how to save that your AOC, and we have also shown you how to import that your AOC to QGIS. Now, the next thing we want to show you is how to digitize points, lines, and polygons, right? That's the next thing we want to show you. So now, we are not going to digitize everything that is here. We are just going to use a few as an example so that you can see how the process can be done, depending on whether you have a project, a school project, maybe um, someone is getting you, maybe engaged for you to be for the person, or whatever the case is, or maybe you're just learning it for fun, as whatever the case is. So now, without spending much time, let's see how we are going to do that. So you come to what you come to layer, and then you go to what create layer. And on that create layer, you do what you create new shape file layer or new shape file layer, right? So you click on that. Good. We are starting with polygon. We are starting with polygon. So let's call this um, the file name. So let's create a subfolder on that our folder because of. Um, something very very important which you will realize very soon so let's call this um, buildings yeah because most of all the polygon shape there are buildings but depending on what you're doing you can decide to give it a different or more unique name right so let's call this um, building right depending on what you're doing you can give it a more unique name and, some, and sometimes we do what we abbreviate our names good then the geometry type, very, very important. Now, the geometry type, we have four geometry types here. Forget about the no geometry. We have the point, the multi-point. We have the line string and the polygon. The, the point and the multi-point can be used synonymously. Then the line string and the polygon are different. So the points are what for point features. The lines are for line features. And the polygon are what for polygonal features. Remember, we are introducing you to how to use what QGIS. We are showing you how you can use QGIS. You know, with this, you can actually get a very simple map, which you are going to see very soon. So we told you we are doing that for what polygon. So we selected that. Then the next thing is what our CRS. We are working under what zone 31, right? So you ensure that you select that zone 31. Then the field name. Let's call this, um, let's say, buildings or let's say BLD. Now the type. They are text data, right? Because we are going to call it, okay, this is an hostel, this is a classroom, and all of those are text. They are not numbers, they are not decimal, right? Good. So we are going to select text type. And then the length, we don't have any of the buildings there that will be as long as 80 words. So let's just reduce it to, let's say, 25, and it cannot even be up to that, right? Good. Then we do what we say, add to field list. We've added this particular name to what to the field list. You are going to see actually progress how it works. So the first thing is what you set the file name. 
the next thing is you set what the geometry type then you give it what a field name you select the length the type of the field and then you add it to what you add it to the field list and you say what you say okay then you will see it on what under your layer panel good you will see it under your layer panel are we together i hope you're following the progress i hope you're following the flow so you see it under your layer panel now on that layer panel as it is there now because we have created it as a shape file and it's actually empty we come to uh, properties or whatever let's say we go to attribute table it's very very empty Good. it's actually empty because nothing has been updated zero zero good so now you come to this what this particular um, digitizing toolbar you come to digitizing toolbar so if you don't have it on your QGIS, you go to any empty space and you right click and then you look for wherever you can see what your digitizing toolbar I think it's good is it here under your toolbar to see it digitizing toolbar good. so if you don't have it here that's how you can get it so since it is here now, there are different tools here, but we are just going to concern or maybe we are just going to focus here. We are going to focus, that's a very special name. We are going to focus on the tools we are going to use. And one of it is what this um, toggle editing. Now the toggle editing starts the digitizing process. This is very, very important. The toggle editing what starts the digitizing process. So when you click on the toggle editing, you now see that so many of the other icons under the digitizing toolbar has been what has been selected are we together good so now what are we trying to digitize we are trying to digitize the polygon that's why you see what add polygon feature right good if it was a, um, maybe a line that we want to digitize you will see what add line feature and if it was a point we want to digitize you see what add what point feature but since it's a polygon you see add polygon feature so these are some things you can use to check yourself if you have actually created the right chip file for the right feature class right Good. So now, since it's polygon, we want to digitize. Just add polygon. Upon clicking on add polygon, you see what your your pointer or maybe your marker, which you would use to start with the digitizing process. Now let's look at a few polygons here, a few buildings that um, are within my my grade school. So let's say good. Let's pick this one. Do I even know? Can I identify this building? I can't at the right time. So let's just click. So. You now see that we have been able to digitize this building. How, what do you do next? You right click. When you right click, you have an opportunity to what? You have an opportunity to give it a name. So let's call this one. And then let's call this, um, should we call it, let's say, hostel. I don't know if it's an hostel anyway. Hostel one, right? Or instead of hostel one, let's call it um, F Young or I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's call it F Young Pop. That's okay. Then the next thing is what um where is this other prominent building? Let's come up to this point and then let's pick this one. This should be the admin block if I'm not making a mistake. So whatever the polygonal shape it is that you have, this is how you do it, this is how you do it, this is how you start digitizing them. You click, let's call this um, two, and then let's call this um, admin, right? Let's call this admin. Okay. What next? What next? What next? What next? Then let's see if we can just pick. Um, I think this should be GIS. So let's just call this the GIS lab. I am not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So when you make a mistake and you want to correct yourself, maybe you want to undo if I like, for instance, now I clicked on this point, which I'm not supposed to do. So you can use the backspace to undo, right? You use the backspace to undo. So I've been undoing what I've done so, so that I can correct myself, right? You see the backspace, right? Good. So I can now get the normal vertices I need and I right click. So let's just call this a uh, GIS lab, right? Sorry, this should be three. And then we call this a uh, GIS lab, which is a uh, GIS lab, right? Good. So we have been able to create like what, let's say three polygon feature, very important. So when you are done with that, you can decide to save before you end or you end. And as you want to end, it will prompt you to save. But it's better you save so that you're sure that you've saved it. So you do what? You click on save. So all of those three features that we've digitized has actually been what? They've actually been saved. Then we click on what? Toggle editing again. That ends or maybe that stops what? That stops the process. So for us to be able to, maybe for us to check what we have done. Sorry, you click on that. For us to check what we have done, we can now right click on this um, building um, layer and we come to open attribute table. You will now see we have what three features, 
Remember when we came the other time, they were at zero, zero, zero. Now we have three fissures because we have done what we've added what um, fissures to that particular layer. So that's how you go about it. Now you see this um, the color here is not very good. We are going to get to that very soon. Let's now also create four lines. So the same way we did, we come to what we come to layer, we go to what add layer, and then sorry, we go to create layer, then we say new shape file layer, right? Good. Then this time around, we are creating for roots because those are the prominent, um, those are the prominent line features we have there. So we call it um, roots, right? We call it roots. We say, okay. Then the geometry type, you've guessed right, line stream, right? Good. Then CRS, we are working on zone 31 BPM. Good. Then what's the next thing? Let's call this um, roots. Remember, these things are not constant. You can decide to give it any name you want to give it, which is actually dependent on whatever you're doing. Add to field, right? Then you say, what else? What else? Okay. You see it under now. You can see the icon is different. The first one is a polygon, actually a polygon, a square. The second one we've done now is what a line is actually what is an horizontal line, right? Good. So ensure whenever you want to start digitizing, ensure you do what you select or you click on the layer who's uh, maybe where you want to digitize those features, where you want to add those features. Because if you click on building and you start digitizing, you can only digitize what polygon shape. However, if you click on lines as well, you can only what digitize what line. So you should not start thinking, ah, why is my cursor not going round when I want to actually digitize building? No, you are not on building, you are online. Are we together? So we are online now. So we put on the toggle editing and you can now see add line feature, right? So you click on it. Let's see, let's see some roads. It's actually a very major road in the state there. So let's pick, uh, let's pick the center, let's pick the center. Let's pick the center for the book. So depending on what you want to achieve, please, you need to pay attention. Depending on what you want to achieve, you have to what, take your time to go through the process as we have what, as we have shown you. So this is actually quite long. So let's call this one. And then this should be on your home or show road. If I'm not making a mistake. Um, did I say it right? Boom or Sure. Did I spell it right, rather? Oh, go more sure. Yeah. Or your go more sure, right? Good. It's actually a very busy road in the state because the window. Oh, we cannot type the road in full because we said 15. Wow. So we've shot ourselves now. So let's just make this um, road here. Yeah. Good. So we say what? Okay. So we've actually added that. What? We've added that particular feature. Then let's come within the school. Let's come within the school. This the this entrance, right? So let's just pick. Let's pick this line. Let's pick this line. Let's pick this line. I think this takes us to the staff quarters. If I'm not making a mistake or something, um, let's come to this intersection. We go this way. We continue. We just right click. This is number two, right? Then the name, let's call it um, internal. Depending on what you're doing, please, depending on what you're doing, these things are not constant. These things are not constant. We're only trying to show you how they can be done. We're only trying to show you how they can be done. So we've actually digitized two line features. So we say what? We save the editing and we stop toggle editing by clicking on toggle editing again, right? Good. Now, the next thing we want to do is that we want to create forward for point. So the same process, new shape file. The file name. We can't actually see electric poles, so let's call these ones trees. At least we can see some trees, right? Let's call these trees. We say okay. The geometry type, of course, let's call it a point. And then our CRS, let's say we are still in them zone. 31, right? Good. Then we call this, um, let's say, trees. Then um, we shot ourselves the other time. Let's increase this to 25. I don't know the tree we are going to type that will be as long as that. So we say, okay. So you can now see the icon. The icon is actually a point. The other icon for road is actually a line. And that of what, um, that of building is actually what, a polygon. So since we are on the layer, 
um, the tree layer. We just come to toggle editing and let's just pick a few trees. You can see what add point feature. So let's say this is a tree. Now, when you click on the tree, since you don't need a second point, immediately you click on that point, the next pop up will be for you to identify that point you've, got, you've selected. So we we'll call this one and then let's call this um, tree one or something. I don't know what to call it, but depending on what you're doing, we must emphasize on that. That's tree one. Then let's select this as well. Let's call it two. And then let's call it what three, two, right? I think we need to be more creative, but don't worry. We say okay. So we have been able to do what? We have been able to create shape files for what? For points, lines, and what? Polygons. So they are not too bad. They are not too bad for a start. So they are not too bad for a start. You can see how they are, right? Good. You can see how they are. And then you can also see where they fall on the base map. Now, this is to guide you. This is to guide you. We must emphasize this is to what this is to guide you. Let's pick this school field that is here because um, let's pick this school field that is here. Let's pick this school field. It's not actually in our school, it's I think a different school. Um Ajay Crowder, right? If I'm not making a mistake. So let's call this this should be five. Then let's call this Aku Ajay Crowder University in Oyo. Good. So we have that. Let's now save. Stop the editing. So we are done with what we are done with creating the shape file. We are done with creating the shape file or digitizing the points, lines, and polygons. So you know the buildings are not um, the buildings are not well represented yet. But what do we do? We come under what we come to properties, and then we select that layer. We go to properties. Good. And under properties and under symbology, we come to simple fill, and we see what um, simple line, simple line. We want to use line. I just don't know why I love the color red whenever I'm trying to get a polygon. So we say okay. So you now see that our buildings have been, um, they are now open. The outline is now open or something. So we have that. Then for the lines, um, which is the which is the root, let's still come on that properties and let's see what we can achieve there. Now the simple line, let's change the color to something brighter or whatever the case is. Let's make it red as well. I'm sorry if everything I want to do is red. Okay, let's make this black. Let's see, let's see, let's make this black. Let's make this black. And then think that's for that. Then the line, let's make it a dash. Then let's make this a point. Five. Let's make this point five. Now, this is where you select. Um, this is how you set rather apply. When you apply, let's see how that is before we close. Good. You can now see there's much difference from how it was before, right? Good. So this is how you do what this is how you select and you modify or let's say you update. Then um, if we don't want to use dash line, we can use dotted line. We apply and then we also see how it is now. You also see how it is now. You can see the lines. You can see the lines, and we do what? What's the next thing? We just say apply. We apply it right. We say okay. So let's put this off the base layer. We see something not too bad because it's just for you to see how you can do it, and for you to be able to do it, you have your preference. You know how best you want to have your aesthetic, right? Good. So we are done with this. Now the next thing we want to show you is the print layer. Now, it's under the print layer where you can maybe put all of this, your map, in perspective. Am I right? Is that, is that actually the right word to use? Now, it's under the print layer you can put all of these your officials in the map. Let's use that. So, you just do what? You come to project and you go to what? New print layout, right? Good. Just select new print layout. You give it a name. Let's say intro to QGIS, sorry, QGIS, okay, I hope the class has been so, so interesting for you, right, good, now our layout is open, now it's under this layer that we want to do what we want to do, I think this is um under, let's go to page properties, this landscape, 
Now, if you want to change your page properties, like um, how you want your map, the page of your map to appear, you just right click as we have done. You go to what page properties, or you just come to the item properties because it's just the map canvas we have there. Let's change it to portrait. Let's change it to portrait, or should we keep it at landscape? A4 is fair because we don't have so much vision there. Let's just keep that um, landscape. But we have shown you how to change it from what from portrait to what to landscape, depending on what you're doing. And the file size is what A4, right? Good. So upon doing that, I think we are done with that. So the next thing now is you come to add item. By coming to add item, we have different items you can add. You have different items. Now, the first thing we should add is what our map. So you click on add map. And then you come to this window and you drag down as we are doing like this drag down so the map you have on your canvas what will be displayed there very soon good that's been displayed right good now since you have this here you can now decide to do any other thing you want to do you can decide to do what any other thing you want to do now pay attention to a few things as it is now you can decide to compress it and you can see it's being compressed and as it is being compressed your skill is also what changing pay attention to the skill your skill is what changing as we increase it, the scale is increasing, and then as we reduce it like this, the scale is also what the scale is also reducing, depending on how we want our map to be. So you can just click on it to move it. Remember, we are still emphasizing that we are introducing you to how you can use what QGIS, how to do what, how to make maps with what QGIS. Are we together? How to make maps with what QGIS? It's actually very very important. So we already have something like this. Then the next thing is what what else should we add um let's add okay let's expand it a bit because there is so much space let's keep it like this good the next thing we should add is what let's add our what our not arrow which is this so i want the not arrow to be here let's be like this let's be like this good so let me move it up a bit are we together all right let's change this to Let's change this to blue. Let's change that to blue. Then there was the next thing we should add. Let's add um, the scale, right? Here is the scale bar. These are just simple map elements. These are simple map elements. I think the scale bar there is it bad? Is it bad? Okay, okay. Let's try to reduce this a bit. Then we expand the scale bar a bit as well, right? Let's see that. Let's see how that goes. Then let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. What well, the next thing we want to add? The next thing we want to add is what a tie to. The next thing we want to add is a tie to. So how do you add a title? You come to what add element, then you see what add label, right? You click on add label, then you just select, you mark out an area where you want to type, right? Good. So this is where you now edit your text. Let's call it the text editor. So let's call it um, QGIS training. Let's call it QGIS training. Good. Now the font very very important as you progress you need to work you need to make your work beautiful so the font here let's say we want to use them um, times new roman right so ti good then i prefer bold and then since the title let's make it something bigger so we have that we have what okay good then um, we come down, you can still do so much. We center it, very important. We put it at the middle, also very, very important. Then um, what's the next thing we should do? The color, let's change it from black to, let's change it from black to red, right? Let's change it from black to red. Sorry, I just have that preference for red. Good, let's change it from black to red. Then what's the next thing? I think um, we are getting there gradually. Okay, QGIS training, right? Let's move this up a bit. Let's move this up a bit. Um, okay, so we've done that. And um, the next thing is that let us also consider our what our grid. So you come to grid and you click on this word, add a new grid. 
when you click on that you have what grid one then you modify that grid are we together you modify that grid now the essence of the grid you are going to see that very soon we are using solid and then we're also using the map finish um let's see we are using solid right good then we are using the map crs then map finish let's now see the interval let's make this 0.1 i hope it's not too it's too much let's make this um, let's make this 10 and see how that goes let's see 10 10 is also still too much let's see 100 100 is still too much let's see 500 okay 500 is fair let's make it 300 okay and then let's also make this 300 and see how that goes make this 500 okay it's fair enough it's fair enough good then let's change this to marker or cross let's change it to cross right good now remember it's not compulsory that you do it this way you need to do it how you want to do it now frame if ever you can do that let's say draw coordinates now when you select draw coordinates that means you want to display the coordinates on your map and how do you want to display it is it in decimal and then what is the accuracy of the decimal the precision so let's just say zero because we don't want it to be having decimals right good then we come to the left you know we have the depiction on the right the left the top and the bottom right so for the left and right they should be vertical so let's say instead of horizontal let's call it vertical what vertical ascending and then for the right let's also call it vertical ascending then for the top and the bottom which is the, yeah the top and the bottom you see that's what horizontal is actually very very important then of all of these your fonts still matter so you click on fonts and then you select the font type you want to use let's see what we have here let's see what we can get let's see time new roman right good then the sizes are still a bit minute let's make it 15 and see how that goes 15 is fair enough right at least they are legible now we can see them so these things are very very beautiful they are interesting depending on how you want to take your time to to go over them right good what else what else for this introduction what else do we have to show to you good so you are having for the first time you are having a very beautiful map now the next thing is that we don't have our um, we don't have our frame yet so you put on your frame and how do you want your frame to be um, how do you want your frame to be let's change this color to this beautiful I don't know for now. let's change this color to that then we come to what we come to grid modify that grid let's modify that grid and then the frame good let's change it to zebra or let's change it to interior text or let's change it to zebra nautical you know you can see depending on what you want to achieve or how maybe the aesthetics you want to get then the fill color or you can change it to blue whatever the case is and you know it's not actually beautiful so let's change it to white again good that's better unless you want to change the other colors from black to something else right good so this is how you go about it what else should we do what else should we do what else should we do for this introduction for this introduction i think we already have quite a beautiful map let's still move this up a bit let's still move this up a bit and then what else what else what else good now we can also look at our what we can look at our scale yeah you see the, the font on the scale is not very good so on upon clicking on it you can still come down to what to change the font you can come to what to display then on that display you go to fonts and then you change the font to to something different so let's say we want to use um let's say we want to use times new roman as we love to use good times new roman and then 
let's see how good you can see how different it appears now so basically this is how you go about making maps on qgs this might not have been how you want it and um, what else should we add what other elements should we add we already have our not arrow we have our we have our um, we have our skill barrier we have our frame and um, let's say we want to add a legend so let's just bring the legend box somewhere around here let's bring it somewhere up here and see how that goes now the legend that is being displayed are those layers we have on what we have on QGIS already because they are automatically updated when you uncheck yeah when you uncheck the auto update you can remove some of the ones you don't like are we together so you come to you come here and you click you select what you want to delete and you do what you delete them so you now have the three let's say the three feature class maybe yeah the three feature class that we focused on right good so you now have them so you immediately you click on auto update it's going to update everything you have there and perhaps maybe you still want to add a few more you just come to what add add layer and then you give it a name and then you continue that way are we together then let's still come to the font um the fonts there are different layers there we have the, the title the legend rather the group heading the subgroup and the item depending on whatever the case is now let's change this um, item font to let's change this um, item font um, let's still see what the um, times new roman can give let's make it bold and let's make it then let's say okay good those are the items there those are the items there right good so basically this is how you go about good basically this is how you go about getting your map now this um layer sorry this um map layout window is actually very vast there are so many things you can get from here depending on what you want i will keep making emphasis depending on what you want so as we said we have shown you by introduction how to use QGIS to make maps. We have shown you by introduction how to use what QGIS to make maps. So there are so many, the emphasis must be there that there are so many things that we can still achieve from this map. So much so we can achieve from this map. But for the sake of introduction, we just need to get somewhere to stop because we've shown you how to get the image from Google Earth for saving you the stress of your referencing. If you want to learn your referencing, there is a video um, there is a link to a video on the description section where you can assess that particular video for you to learn it and we have shown you how to bring in the image which we've actually been doing on the channel we've shown you how to create the shape file for the feature classes the points lines and the polygons for a few of them we've shown you how to come to what to the map layout so we have introduced you to all of these things and we are we believe that you should be able to what, build on it now when you have any challenge maybe you want to do it and you don't have the time or maybe you need someone to engage you can actually contact us we are always available to be at service like to be of service to you we are always available to what to to help you succeed or maybe help you solve your problem we believe we have been able to we have been able to exhaust everything we want to do now so let's say you want to export you want to print right good so what do you do you save let's say you export as pdf now there is a limitation not really a limitation anyway depend on the configuration of your system most times if you export it as an image if the file size is very big it will take a longer time so sometimes it's always good you export as pdf so you just do what you export as pdf so let's call this intro to js right good or let's say first map first map right and let's save it so there are some other export options which are not really very important for this particular video because um, we don't want it as a geo pdf so let's just say save let's get it good export layer successful so we are going to assess that all right so we have been able to assess the what the first map we made and not too bad the map not too bad the map so this is how you go about what creating your map on what on QGIS so you can see QGIS training we don't even have so much detail there we just have what the boundary sorry 
we have the grid, we have our not arrow, some few legend, the scale, then the official class, and some other stuff in it. The one to pause for today, we have been able to show you some of these things. So if you have any question, any suggestion, contribution, or any tax you have for us, you can rightly maybe send us a message on any of our platforms and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So until we see you on our next video, keep improving, keep being good at what you're doing, and have a nice time. Bye.